let us discuss about the case of projection of a charged particle in a magnetic field normal to it. Here you can see the in this region a magnetic field of magnitude b, and in inward direction b vector exists, and say this dotted line represents the boundary of this magnetic field. And say a charged particle with the charge magnitude q, a positive charge enters into it with a velocity v. In a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field, we know that the magnetic force on the charged particle is given as Q multiplied by V cross B. Here we can see that direction of velocity vector and the magnetic field are perpendicular. So the angle between V and B is 90 degrees. So magnitude of this magnetic force we can write as Q V B. And the direction we can calculate simply by cross product. In this situation, velocity vector is toward right. Magnetic induction is in inward direction, so it will be in the direction perpendicular to both velocity and magnetic field. As soon as it will enter, it will experience the magnetic force vector in this direction. And due to the force, if it will bend in the upward direction, its velocity will change. Its direction will change correspondingly. Magnetic force direction will also change. As in this situation, by using cross product or any other rule, you can find out the direction of magnetic force. It will always be acting in a direction perpendicular to velocity. So we can write that as F M vector is always perpendicular to velocity vector. This implies. Path of a particle in magnetic field will be circular, or it will follow a circular motion as the force is always acting in the direction perpendicular to velocity. And this point along the line of force, there will be a center located where all forces are intersecting. So about this circle, it will follow a circular path. And during this motion, at every instant, you can see the velocity vector is tangential, and the magnetic force vector will always be passing through the center of circle. And as soon as it reaches the boundary, it will be ejected out, and tangentially, it will move in a straight line. So this is the way how the path of particle will be carried on within the magnetic field along a circle. And for the circular motion, we can see. The necessary centripetal force at every point of circular motion will be provided by this magnetic force. So here we can write if radius of circle is r. This implies here we can write Q V B will provide the centripetal force m v square by r for the circular motion. Here V gets cancelled out, and we get the value of radius of circle as m v over q b. So this is the radius of circle in which the particle will move. So you must be very careful about this expression, as in many cases directly we are going to use the radius of circular path as m v by q b whenever a charged particle enters into a magnetic field. Such that velocity vector is perpendicular to magnetic induction. In continuation, let's discuss some more cases for projection of a particle normal to magnetic field. Say this is a boundary within which a uniform magnetic field in inward direction exists, which is perpendicular to the plane of the surface. Here, say a charged particle plus Q. Moving with a velocity vector v enters into the region. Here, by right hand palm rule, we can see that the magnetic force will act on the charged particle in the direction normal to velocity. And as it is entering perpendicular to magnetic field, it will move us in a circular path, of which the center will lie somewhere on the initial line of force. If this is the center of circle, with respect to this point, it will follow a circular path. And we know that the radius of path is r, which is given by m v over q b. We already discussed. And as it reaches the other boundary of the magnetic field, it is ejected out with the same velocity, and continue to move in the same straight line, which is tangential to the path at the boundary of magnetic field. 
So here we can see just uh, at the corner of this magnetic field boundary, the direction of motion of uh, charged particle is changed. From the initial direction, we can see it is deflected uh, by an angle of deflection delta, which can be easily calculated by using the geometry over here. So using magnetic field, we already discussed we can never change the velocity magnitude of a charged particle, but uh, the direction can be changed. Similarly, say we consider another case a charge plus Q moving with a velocity V enters into the magnetic field at some angle theta to the boundary of magnetic field, but you can see the direction of uh, the velocity is still perpendicular to magnetic field. So using right hand palm rule, the magnetic force on the particle will be perpendicular to the direction of velocity. So on this line of force, there will be a point which can be considered as the center of its circular motion. It follows the circular motion and be ejected out from the other point on the boundary and will further move in the straight line. Here if this angle is theta, we can see by symmetry this angle will also be theta. This will be 90 minus theta and this total angle will be 2 theta. So here this is the original direction of motion of particle. This is the final direction of motion of particle. Here you can see this is the total angle by which the particle is deflected or this can be treated as angle of deviation delta. And here we can see if this angle is 2 theta as these two angles are 90 degree, this will be 2 pi minus 2 theta. So this deviation angle will also be 2 theta. That is the angle by which the charged particle is totally deviated. So using magnetic field, we can see the speed of particle does not change because it will never do work on particle, but uh, its direction of motion changes. And uh, we can also analyze the time spent by the particle within the region. Like uh, we can simply stay, uh, state that uh, speed of particle in magnetic field we already discussed this is V which remains constant. So if we calculate angular speed of a particle in circular motion when projected normally to magnetic field, normally to B vector is this angular speed we can write as V by R. The radius of circular motion we already obtained on the previous sheet. So if we substitute it here, this uh, speed V gets cancelled out and angular speed we are getting is QB by M. This is quite a useful relation which uh, you can see in which you can see that it is independent of a speed. That means no matter in which direction or magnitude the particle is thrown, its angular motion will remain constant and depend on charge magnetic induction vector and its mass. So if we calculate the time period of a circular motion of particle, this time period we can simply write as 2 pi by omega. If we substitute the value, it will be 2 pi m over qb. And as this time also you can see it does not depend on the speed. In this situation, as the total angle which the arc of particle is subtending its center is 2 theta, the time spent by the particle can be easily calculated. Time spent in magnetic field can be directly given as T is total angle of the circular arc which is 2 theta divided by omega. We can use the value of omega we are already known and uh, this can be directly used in many cases.